everyone. This is my daughter Mackenzie's dog Lila and she loves to talk. So here we are. We're getting ready to start our second set of slides for goal one. In this video Lila and I are going to talk about the second precedent, um, Adams. Okay, John Adams. Later on we'll talk about Jefferson, who's the third president. These two guys were extremely different um, and we'll spend a little bit of time comparing them. Let's go. Okay, so this is a new nation, part two. Um, we're going to talk about the Adams and the Jefferson administrations. And this information is all in chapter two of the textbook, sections two and three. We're dealing with goal one um, for the most part, and we'll touch on objective one, identify domestic issues and conflicts during the Federalist period, as well as objective three, assess and describe commercial and diplomatic relations with Britain, Spain, and France. And we'll touch on goal two, objective one, analyze the effects of territorial expansion. The essential, essential questions we'll address are, why did some see Jefferson's election as a Republican re revolution? What was the impact of John Marshall's tenure as Chief Justice of the United States? What was the importance of the Louisiana Purchase? And what were the effects of Jefferson's foreign policies? So first we'll talk about the presidency of John Adams. Adams won the presidency in the 1796 elections. He was a Federalist and he just barely beat Jefferson who was a Democratic Republican. Jefferson, as per the Constitution, became the Vice President. That's how it was set up back in that time. One of the things um, that happened during this election was that Adams battled with Hamilton for control of the Federalist Party. And the behind the scenes battle weakened the Federalist Party substantially. Also during Adams' presidency, relations with France were getting worse. Adam lacked tact and grace in diplomatic relations. He was known for being pretty abrasive also kind of pompous or arrogant, um, and he really offended a lot of people. Um, so France felt betrayed by the U.S. Why do you think this was the case? Well, if you think about it, uh, Chief Justice Jay had just made the Jay Treaty with Britain. This was to avoid war with Britain, um, but it angered France. They didn't appreciate us making a treaty with, with Britain. So they began to seize U.S. merchant ships. Back in this time, seizing ships was kind of the equivalent of giving someone a swirly. That's the only thing I can, that comes to mind. But I don't know if you all know what a swirly is, but when I was in middle school, it was the popular thing to threaten people with. So um, if you're going to bully someone, you would threaten to give them a swirly. And that's kind of like <clears throat> what seizing merchant ships um, was like back in those times. Adams did try to smooth things over with France. He sent a diplomat there. Um, and what happened was when they got when the diplomat got to France, um, three French officials met them there. Um, and they tried these very embarrassing tactics, including um, asking for bribes. Um, for the U.S. representatives to visit with the French ambassador. Since the French officials were identified only as X, Y, and Z, the incident became known as the X, Y, Z affair. Americans were completely insulted by the French requesting a bribe, and they actually walked out of the negotiations. Um, we'll do a little skit to give you guys a kind of a visual of what happened during the X, Y, Z affair. Another well-known um, event that took place during Adams' presidency were the Alien and Sedition Acts. In 1798, Adams used the French Revolution as an excuse to pass these acts. People were concerned about the French Revolution. They were worried about people revolting against the government, even here in America. So Adams passes the first the Alien Act. Um, and this was uh, designed to target immigrants who criticized the government. 
um, and it allowed for them to be arrested or deported. He even made it worse by passing the Sedition Act, which said that jurors could acquit those accused of criticizing the government only if the person could literally prove the truth of their statement. So it had to be something that you could back up with evidence if you were going to um, criticize the government in any way. As you can imagine, this was seen as a violation of the First Amendment. The Virginia Resolves and the Kentucky Resolutions declared the Sedition Acts unconstitutional. So this is two states who are rebelling against a federal mandate. Can state laws overpower federal laws? This is what came into question. The issue of constitutionality of those acts, of the Alien and Sedition Acts, nearly broke up the nation. People were so divided about it. And they felt very strongly about it. People felt that the First Amendment, the right to free speech, was a very important part of our new nation. So the voters finally speak up. People are angry with high taxes that Adams has imposed. And they're also angry with the issue of the Alien and Sedition Acts. And Adams knows this. He knows that people are angry. And he does try to um, improve things by reaching out to France again and improving foreign relations with them. So that's it for this little video. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about the election of President Jefferson. See you soon.